Welcome to another video from explainingthefuture.com. This time I'm celebrating the channel's 10th anniversary as the first video was uploaded on the 29th of June 2008. That video was called The Future A to Z and it took us on a journey from AI and biocomputers all the way through to quantum computers and resource depletion and space travel. And over the past decade, I've made videos on all of those topics and more. And so I thought what we do in this video is to look back at some of my favorite content on this channel and also with hindsight to reflect on things to come. I've always been an advocate of green issues and sustainability. And on this channel over the past decade, I've highlighted a lot of related challenges, including climate change and peak oil and peak water and broader resource depletion. This said, I've always been keen to stress that in the future, we don't just need to consume less, we also need to find more. And indeed, my favorite set of content on this channel was all about that. It was called Resources from Space, made in 2014, five videos which took ages and ages and ages to make and which focused on space-based solar power and asteroid mining and mining the moon. Sadly, over the course of the past 10 years, many government space initiatives, including several plans to return human beings to the moon, have been scrapped. However, I would place a fairly strong bet that the Chinese will land human beings on the moon in the 2030s. The private sector is now also gearing up for a big push into space, with companies including SpaceX, Blue Origin, Planetary Resources and Moon Express all intent on helping our species to evolve beyond our first planet. Over the past 10 years, the 3D printing revolution has started to arrive and has been a major driver of activity on this channel. Indeed, if we look back across the roughly 9 million views there have been so far on Explaining the Future videos, about 7 million of those views have been on 3D printing content. Most notably, early in 2012 I made a video called The 3D Printing Revolution, and then later in 2012 I visited the 3D Print Show in London, the first ever 3D Print Show, made a video about that, and that's been my most popular video I've ever uploaded to any of my YouTube channels. Since 2012, I've also reported from many other 3D printing events, and we've seen all kinds of 3D printers and 3D prints. These have included reproductions of scanned Egyptian mummies, many Iron Man masks, industrial components, various medical models, and really cool works of art. Right now, 3D printing is still a niche of advancing technology that's mainly used for prototyping and to make moulds and other production tooling. But many aircraft do now include some final 3D printed components, while personalised 3D printed medical prostheses are increasingly entering the mainstream. In addition, Adidas now sell these Futurecraft 4D trainers with a 3D printed midsole. And a company called Feats is even selling customised shoes that are entirely 3D printed. These developments I find particularly interesting as back in my 3D printing revolution video, I predicted a future 3D printout of shoes. At the time, many people argued that 3D printed shoes would never ever happen, and so it's great that they've already arrived. In addition to 3D printers that make things out of plastics, metal, ceramics and even chocolate, over the years on this channel I've illustrated the concept of the bioprinting of living human tissue. When I first made a video about this subject in early 2011, the research was still in its very early stages. And even today, bioprinting a human heart or kidney or other body part for medical transplantation probably lies at least a decade into the future. This said, a pioneer called Organovo is now selling bioprinted human liver tissue and human kidney tissues for use in drug testing. Since I made my first video on the subject, bioprinting has therefore progressed to become a commercial reality, and it'll be fascinating to see how it develops in the future. I've often argued that the job of a futurist is not to predict a single definitive future, but instead to put on the table a range of possible futures and then people can look at all those possible futures, decide on the one they most want to happen, and then work towards making it a reality. 
In addition to space mining and bioprinting, future possibilities showcased on this channel have included uploading the human mind into a computer, the development of cryonic systems to suspend people for possible reanimation, the development of robots, the uh, creation of vertical farms for urban agriculture, the development of medical nanorobots or nanobots, the creation of bio buildings that could grow directly from, for example, reprogrammed acorns, and the development of biocomputers. As I explained in a video called The Making of Resources from Space, I brought all of these potential future visions to the screen using the Lightwave 3D modeling package. Many of the best computer graphic shots and stills that I've made for explaining computers videos have also gone on to appear in TV shows and print publications around the world, and have also featured in my own books. Indeed, since I launched explainingthefuture.com in June 2008, I've published eight books which have been further translated into four different languages. And if you're interested in my books, you can find information about them on the explainingthefuture.com website, where you can download free PDF samplers. Looking to the future, I'm planning now on uploading a new Explain the Future video every month. I know I've been trying to get back into making content for a long while now, but I've really got a big plan I'm going to do, and I'm going to make a new video every month on Explaining the Future. Uh, the first video is going to be about the future of food. Probably after that, there's a future on cyborg synthesis. I want to come back to AI, various uh, organic digital technologies. So there's lots of things I want to have a go at on the channel. And right now, Explaining the Future has got about 50,000 subscribers. And my plan, my goal is to try and get to 100,000 subscribers in the next couple of years. We shall see. Anyway, that is now it for another video. Thanks greatly for subscribing and watching and, and just being a, a part of the channel over the past 10 years. Um, that's it for now. And uh, I hope to talk to you again very soon.